Hi bunnies, it's Robin Yoda. Welcome to my Warren. Let's talk about Thor Love and Thunder. This was a pretty good movie. I really enjoyed the premise. Um, from what I had seen of the trailer breakdowns and a few theory videos that I'd watched, I went into this expecting not much. You know, I saw a lot of Ooh, Natalie Portman's in it. It's not a good movie. I saw a lot of, you know, there's so many things that they could have done better. Where's this storyline that we all wanted? And like, you know what? I personally enjoyed this movie. This was very much something that, as someone who didn't read the comics, as someone whose Marvel experience is basically just the movies and the 90s cartoons, this was something that I felt was a good transition for the character of Thor, for the amiable dissolution of the relationship between Dr. Foster and Thor. It was a nice conclusion to some of her storyline. It gave Thor the family that he wanted. It was very much a let's move Thor and Jane to their next, um, to their next stage, you know? We no longer need Party Boy Thor. We no longer need, um, the, the... What, how do you describe Dr. Foster? She's an intelligent, brave, ambitious, and yet down to earth person. But it's very much, she's finally dealing with something that she can't brain her way out of. <laughs> And that's something that we needed to see from her. So I particularly enjoyed that storyline. I was kind of disappointed that um, things ended the way they did. And I would have liked for a slightly different ending. Mm, not substantive different I guess um, I mean I, I think I would have liked to have seen the ending the origin of the thing that happens at the end be a little bit more complex and a little bit more through line but I get what they were doing and I approve and I think that if you want to see this movie, because you can, that you should. And I believe that if you enjoy complex storytelling, you'll probably enjoy this movie. And that's really all you need to know. Bye.